Tucked away in the center of Salem, Illinois, across the street from Marion County Courthouse, is a campus made up of modern and historic buildings that is the home of Grayson and Methodist Church. Since 1907, the congregation has worshipped at this location. This is the story of how the campus came to be and why it was honored to be placed on the National Register of Historic Places in August 28, 2018. The original building began as the Methodist Episcopal Church. It was built in 1907 in the style known as Richardsonian Romanesque, the first and only architectural style ever named after an American. Born in 1838 and only living 47 years, Henry Hobson Richardson broke away from the European traditions and designed buildings that stood out as truly original. Instead of the sometimes boring symmetry of Greek and Roman buildings, Richardson's buildings were asymmetrical, having different sized towers, varied wall shapes, and differing roof lines. Characteristics of the Richardsonian Romanesque style found in this church include heavy rusticated stone, boat courses, windows with Roman arches, entrances with Roman arch supported columns with floral capitals, and towers of unequal size. In 1906, history was being made. Albert Einstein had just published his theory of relativity the year before. San Francisco had a terrific earthquake and fire. Radio broadcasting was invented. And the Methodist Episcopal Church congregation employed the architectural firm of Charles Henry and Son of Akron, Ohio to come up with a design for the new church building. Here is a promotional postcard showing the early plan. Here is our finished building. In hindsight, it appears that Henry used our project as a prelude to the designing of his crowning achievement in his hometown of Akron, which was finished three years later. The Barenfinger Construction Company was hired to carry out the instructions of the architect. The foundation was made of limestone on reinforced concrete. In 1907, the cornerstone was laid as the building took shape. About this time, it came to light that the church treasurer had left the area and absconded with the building funds. As a result, fundraising had to begin at zero. Although exact amounts can't be proven, church lore has it that the building was paid for twice. The focal point of the sanctuary was the chancel area at the front of the church, with its huge floor-to-ceiling alcove that was later filled with organ pipes. The choir was seated to the left of this area, with the organist facing the choir. The north and south walls of the sanctuary have large leaded stained glass windows, which are variants of the wheel window design. The centers of the windows are tear-shaped, filled with the symbolism from the Bible in the French style to match the Norman influence of the building. On the south wall, the center of the window shows the chalice representing the Last Supper. Surrounding the cup is a vine with branches that are bearing fruit. 
This represents man's relationship to God. God is the vine, humanity is the branch, and through him we bear fruit. At the bottom of the south window is a detailed depiction of Christ praying in the Garden of Gethsemane after he was betrayed. With Jerusalem in the background, Peter, James, and John sleep while Jesus prays about the future as a branch of thorns hints at the outcome. Flanking the south window are two vertical windows that were donated to the church. On the left side is one dedicated by the J.S. Chandler Post of the Grand Army of the Republic because the Methodist Episcopal Church provided more chaplains and brigades than any other denomination for the cause of the North during the Civil War. At the top of this window is a crown symbolizing the resurrection. On the right, the lily window is dedicated by the Porter family. At the top of this window is a cross representing the crucifixion. The north sanctuary window's overall pattern is a reverse of the south window. In the center is a white circle representing the eternal God, a gold triangle symbolizing the trinity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The descending dove references the Bible's account of Jesus' baptism, while the olive branches symbolize peace. At the bottom of this window is Christ depicted as a good shepherd holding the lost sheep while the mother and the rest of the flock look on. Flanking side windows are identical except for the top panels. On the left is a symbol for Alpha and on the right is Omega, which refers to God being the beginning and the end. On the ceiling above the rear section of the sanctuary is a skylight made of stained glass and scrolled wood. Originally, a sun tunnel through the roof allowed skylight in through this window, but now electric lights illuminate it. Our church, which was then called Grace Methodist, dedicated their new education building which connected to the west end of the 1907 structure. This building was made to match the appearance of the original by using rusticated limestone walls and a wheel window design. Late 1960s, the old organ became obsolete and not repairable and its replacement caused a complete remodel of the interior of the sanctuary to take place. A new organ, organ pipes, and 22 seat choir loft were installed at the rear of the sanctuary in the balcony because modern organs were much more compact and did not require huge alcoves for their pipes. This left a big hole at the front of the church. How could this cavity be filled and the church interior modernized with the limited funds? With the help of the hard-working membership, a plan was devised by longtime member Violet Miller, known as Vi. She worked as an interior designer for Styx, Bear, and Fuller, which was a department store in St. Louis. Miller was able to transform the interior through her creative reuse of materials. By using the ends of wood boards, Miller created wall surfaces with varied textures and colors. The vestibule walls were stained brown, while the alcove was made of pastel colored 2 by 6 inch end slices. These 15,000 pieces of wood were hand dipped in one of 89 hues of paint by the younger members of the church. Wood planks were placed diagonally to create the herringbone pattern adjacent to the alcove.
To create the cross in the alcove, an impressive 18 feet high and 12 feet wide, gold-colored wires were stretched vertically and horizontally between lighted plastic blocks. Strands of polyethylene twine attached to the apex of the alcove fan out across the top. A red glass material on the center of the cross is molded so that when the lights are on, the shadow of a crown appears on the wall above the cross. Miller's choice of unusual materials made it possible to implement her designs at little expense. Some of the reused materials were obvious, like a vestibule ceiling lined with paper pulp egg cartons. Other materials were more deceiving, like the colonnettes and columns framing the front alcove that were constructed of cardboard carpet tubes topped with croquet balls. The tall columns in front were painted to resemble old, gold-colored distressed marble. Decorative sconces were made of downspouts and sheet metal. Linoleum tiles that were used to line the staircase to the second floor and the risers on the chancel were also used for the horizontal bands of ellipses representing the Christian fish symbol. We entered the 21st century by completing an addition to our campus. Grace Hall was completed in 2010 to increase our ability to serve our members and community. Besides having the main entrance to the church next to a large private parking lot, the facility provides offices, classrooms, meeting rooms, and a full-size gymnasium that doubles as a meeting hall with a full commercial kitchen. According to the National Register of Historic Places Registration Form, Grace United Methodist Church is the most complete example of Richardsonian Romanesque architecture in the area. This qualifies it for listing for architectural significance. Also, the 1968 remodeling possesses high artistic value for its creative use of common materials. The church derives its significance from architectural and artistic distinction. <laughs>